Has the media destroyed Harvey Weinstein's chance for a fair trial? His lawyer says he's innocent, that he's been victimized by the press. But here's the thing, there's a lot of evidence suggesting the media actually helped protect Weinstein. In his book, Catch and Kill, journalist Ronan Farrow claims his own investigation into Weinstein was blocked by NBC. More than 80 women have come forward accusing Harvey Weinstein of sexual misconduct. Now the former movie mogul is spending his days in a Manhattan courtroom where a judge is preparing to hear two of those cases. Weinstein is charged with raping one woman and sexually assaulting another. The 67-year-old has denied all the charges and insists all sex acts were consensual. You know what? We all make mistakes. Second chance, I hope. But dozens of Hollywood celebrities, including Gwyneth Paltrow and Angelina Jolie, suggest Weinstein's behavior was an open secret for decades. Do you have any advice for a young girl moving to Hollywood? Um, I'll get lively with this. Like Harvey Weinstein invites you to a private party and four seasons stuff. Weinstein rumors even became a joke at the 2013 Oscars. Congratulations, you five ladies no longer have to pretend to be attracted to Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> so did Weinstein make the stories go away? In his book, Catch and Kill, journalist Ronan Farrow writes about his divorce from NBC, accusing NBC News of ordering him to stand down and stop making calls about Weinstein. Why? He claims Weinstein made it known to execs that he could expose Matt Lauer's own sexual misconduct. Farrow then took his story to The New Yorker, where it won a Pulitzer Prize, and Matt Lauer was fired a month later. NBC's president denies Farrow's story, telling employees there is no evidence of any reports of Lauer's misconduct before his firing. But not all NBC staff were buying that. Accusations that people in positions of authority in this building may have been complicit in some way in shielding those guys from accountability, those accusations are very, very hard to stomach. NBC says Farrow's Weinstein story just wasn't ready for broadcast. But when the story broke, the Me Too movement exploded. Yes means yes and no means no. Stop the rape! Stop the violence! Stop the rape! Joining me to talk about all of this is former NBC producer Rich McHugh. He's currently working on another story regarding the Harvey Weinstein case for Vanity Fair. So, Rich, you and Ronan worked together on the Weinstein story uh, before it was published in the New York Times. You both allege that NBC killed the story. Can, can powerful people actually kill a story? Absolutely can kill a story. Uh, Harvey had been doing it for for decades, and it's it's not just like he picks up a phone and calls somebody. There's there's powerful systems and mechanisms in place uh, designed to protect very powerful people, not just Harvey, but people across you know every industry in America and North America and the world. And uh, it, it's those systems that are really dangerous because when you have victims that are being silenced for as long as they were in this case, um, that causes a lot of damage to, to individuals and, you know, I think there, there's a domino effect. NBC has denied that they tried to bury or, or, or kill this story. You've alleged that they did. Why would they do that? I, I think they knew that they had a Matt Lauer problem, you know, that all these allegations serious allegations would come out uh, about Matt Lauer if they were to go ahead with the Harvey Weinstein investigation and story. We couldn't publish an expose on uh, sexual harassment charges and, and sexual assault charges against Harvey Weinstein when one of the main anchors, the main anchor sitting inside NBC, uh, had privately had the same charges basically leveled against him. Uh, those were going to be exposed and they knew it. Ronan Farrow has, has alleged that you and he were intimidated by this group, this Israeli private intelligence group, Black Cube. What can you tell us mm -hmm. ab about that? What do, what do you say happened? So we interviewed Rose McGowan in, I think it was February of 2017. And soon after that, uh, our, name, our names appeared on lists from apparently two different intelligence firms, one of which was Black Cube. 
I met with a cons security consultant who confirmed that my phone was very likely uh, had been hacked by a third party and had to get a new phone and then had to spend, you know, a quite amount of time on burner phones and encrypted apps. One bit of advice that the, the security consultant gave me was like, the only way you can protect against this is if you become a ghost, which is terrifying for a father of four daughters because that's, it's basically impossible in this digital age. So at a certain point, you just have to surrender and say, you know, you know, what, I'll, what, what are you going to find about me? Because it's very easy for people to, to hack into your, your emails and your life. So it's terrifying. You walked away from this job, from this paycheck. You have a family. Why did you feel you had to quit? I knew what had happened. I knew what we had done. I knew what all the evidence that we had amassed and all the voices that we had um, gotten on the record and people to talk. And uh, uh, executives were trying to say, well, we just didn't have the story. Rich and Ronan, they did great work, but they just didn't have it. And that was not true. Um, so I couldn't live with myself if I stayed there uh, because by not speaking out about it in some way, was I was also complicit. Rich McHugh, it's been great to talk to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Wendy. Great to talk to you.